Hey guys, welcome back to another video. It's Gold's Conspiracy here. And today, well, yeah, I have another video. Sorry for not posting in a while. Yeah, but hey, we hit 100 subs quite a while ago. I don't have a video for it. It's kind of sad. We're about to hit 200 subs though, and I will have a video coming out for that, a very special video, which will kind of be the 100, 200 sub video. Because we're, I believe we're at 180 something subs, which is crazy. I never thought I'd get this far that fast. So, today, I'm going a little bit out of my comfort zone for this video. And I'm going to be doing a DIY video, or a do-it-yourself. So, today I will be making chainmail. If you don't know what chainmail is, it's an armor that almost all knights wear in medieval movies. Or any kind of knight movie like that. Um... So the first thing what you'll the first thing you'll need is to go to the hardware store and get some kind of galvanized wire. It doesn't have to be galvanized, but it just makes it easier and also it's shinier for your armor. So I get I got 16 gauge. You can get 18 gauge. It's a little bit more bendable, but yeah, must and you can get this pretty cheap. It's about it's a 200. I got 200 feet for 10 bucks. Of 16 gauge. Um, so let me just open this up. Yeah. And it was a knife. Get a knife out. Yeah, there we go. After you get your metal free from the box, you're going to need a couple of different things. So, one of the top things you're going to need is two dowel rods. Wooden dowel rods. Let me get my other one. So, you can either go three eighths of an inch for the rolling or you can go half inch. I go half inch and then this other one the three eighths inch we'll use later. So the half inch you're gonna want a variable speed drill. Yeah variable low high. I usually keep it on low for this kind of thing. You wanna stick wait there we go. You're gonna want to stick this into your drill. And then tighten it onto the rod. And then on the rod, you're going to want to stick a hole in. Just put a hole right through the entire bottom. Which should match the width of your wire. So, Cut this open. Cut my yeah. There's zip ties on the wire. I had to cut that free. So now that you have your wire, you're going to want to roll it into rings. Which you just take your wire. I just take my wire, stick it through the hole, close that off. And then you just want to start to slowly roll. So you want to stick it in. I put it in the wrong way. You want to stick it in, and then you just want to slowly begin to roll out a spring of wire. You want to go slow with this. You don't want to have any the functional rings. You see how the rings are starting to form on the uh, drill? On the dowel rod?
Got it. Like that. That just let's uh, pull you and then what you can do to fix that you can try and pull that out and then try and pull that. Right, yeah, that's fine. That's enough. For this demonstration, you want a pair of wire cutters and cut your wire off. You can make as you can make bigger ones the entire length of the rod, but you don't really need that. I'm not gonna do that for this demonstration. So you can see that this is pretty malleable and flexible. So you cut use your wire cutters to cut off the spring from the rest. Then you take it, you slide it down your dowel rod, then you got a little spring of rings. Well, from there, you take your wire cutters, and you just want to take it, and you just want to make cuts. It's a little bit hard. I mean, because I try and cut as many rings as possible at, at once. And then you get your rings. Let me just finish off this roll of rings. I usually cut eight or ten at a time with these because they're just longer, takes more force. But And then what you're going to want next is I built a little stand. Just put a half inch hole through this, put it on some scrap wood I had. Then you're going to want to take your rings and put them in like a bucket like that. So I have two rings. What I use these for is I take my three inch or three eighths of an inch dowel rod from earlier. Take it, slide it right between the holes. And now we have our stand for making chainmail. So you're also going to need... pliers. You can use needle nose. I prefer round tip, but I don't have my other round tips right now, so you're gonna want two pairs of pliers. You're gonna take your rings. To start off, you just wanna take them on each side and you just kinda wanna wiggle them closed. Wiggle until there is a small gap in between. Like that. And then take it and slide it onto the three inch inch, three eighths of an inch. I would probably get a smaller rod than a quarter of it, than an eighth of an inch smaller because it gives you more room to work. So uh for this demonstration, I'm just gonna put four on there right now. Just to keep this shorter, short as possible video. So you just wiggle them closed. Then you stick it on the rod. So, one more. You can do as many of these as you want to make a big piece of chain mill or a small piece of chain mill. And it's always one simple pattern. It's actually really easy. It's just very time consuming to make it by hand. Which is why it's very expensive online. Because you can't really machine make this. If you could, it would just be very complicated. So, you want to take one ring, stick it through that one, and stick it through the other one. So this is a technique called 4 and one It's a very basic technique where you put four rings into one ring but for this you just take the two top rings and stick one ring through it and then you take this ring stick it through the last one stick it through the last one that you just did Look, that on the last 
last one, you take this, put it through the last ring you just had, and stick it on to the next one. Now you have four rings in one ring. And now you're on your way to making chain mail. But you can, I'm just going to keep going for this example to show you that it works. Keep going into one from one ring into the next ring. And then you just move down on layers. And eventually, if you do this enough, you can come up with a piece of chain mail up to this large. I did this by myself over a couple times. This will eventually be made into a shirt of chain mail. I have about half my body right now. So that's pretty good. But um yeah, so just make sure your rings are all the way closed. You don't want them falling off in the middle of your chain mail. It really stinks. Happened to me before. I'm trying to think if there's anything I missed. I don't think so. So just keep the pattern going. And then eventually you'll make chain mail. Alright guys, well that was Golden Conspiracy. Tell me how you like the DIYs. I might do more of them. So um for now that's Golden Conspiracy. Signing off.